Welcome to Invest Insights. My name is Abby Malone. I'm joined by Dario Altieri, the President and CEO of the Worcester Institute, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Worcester is a world leader in early stage discovery science, and we're here to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. Please do subscribe to our channel to view more videos like these. Dario, I want to start with the most exciting news, uh, which is that the Worcester team and collaborators in both academia and biotech are creating a SARS-CoV-2 uh, vaccine and other innovative diagnostic and therapeutic solutions uh, to combat the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Can you tell me a little bit more about the current pursuit? How far is off is the potential vaccine? And what are the key stumbling blocks to getting it out to the public uh, quickly? Well, Abby, thank you so much for having me on the program. I really appreciate it. It's true, you know, Wister has been here for, for many, many years as an institution, and we have been uh, making significant contributions uh, in immunology and vaccine development over many, many years. And, uh, and vaccines that started as research tools um, quickly became safe and effective drugs that are in use today. And so, and so we were prepared uh, as much as anybody can be prepared. Uh, there was work going on in our uh, vaccine and immunotherapy center over the uh, cousins of uh, COVID-19, other coronaviruses that generated world outbreaks, not as severe and not as widespread as this one. And so leveraging that uh, expertise and uh, the experience with the SARS and MERS outbreaks, uh, the Institute in collaboration with the, the biotechnology company called Innovio Pharmaceuticals that is also here in Pennsylvania. We managed to go from uh, the design of a recombinant DNA-based vaccine to dosing the first uh, healthy volunteers in three months, which is, uh, you know, in terms of vaccine development, it is truly extraordinary. Uh, again, leveraging prior experience and, uh, and a, an infrastructure that it was already that it was already in place. That's wonderful that you can benefit from that infrastructure. You know, as a world leader in early stage discovery science in the areas of cancer, immunology, and infectious disease, what does the community at large need to consider in thinking about those most vulnerable um, at, uh, in terms of a weakened immune system? Absolutely. I mean, if there is one thing that we've learned from the epidemiology of the COVID-19 outbreak or pandemic, if we want to use that term, is it that in fact it segregates uh, uh, the, the most severe cases uh, um, segregates with individuals that have, uh, you know, uh, pre pre-existing conditions and comorbidities. Certainly, uh, you know, prior uh, respiratory respiratory disease, cardiovascular disease, but also immune suppression. And and Abby, unfortunately, we still don't know many things about this virus. Um, the uh, you know we're not entirely clear as to why it appears that. Um, our antiviral response, which is the host response to the infection, is not as robust, doesn't seem to be at least uh, as robust. Some of the most severe cases seem to have a, a very, uh, paradoxically, a very, very high immune inflammatory reaction that could actually be a contributing factor to the severity of the cases. And so, and so this is, you know, the aspect of basic biomedical research that is just as essential as the development of a vaccine, because then we can target it more precisely the, the most at-risk population. And Philadelphia has seen an increase in its cases as of late. What can the community at large uh, do to help us uh, uh, lower the curve? We've heard of uh, shelter in place, uh, staying six feet away, social distancing. Uh, what is your key message? Uh, the, it's the same that you hear from every health official. Uh, without uh, a vaccine, without approved therapies to reduce the severity of the symptoms, sheltering in place and social distancing are really the only things, the only approaches that we have in order to reduce the infection rate. And, you know, I, I know it's very hard. Uh, it's very difficult. It creates tremendous disruption. Uh, the economic engine of entire communities, you know, grind to a halt. But Abby is the, really the only thing that we have. And, and now, you know, emerging evidence, particularly from the Wuhan experience where you know, most of the initial data were collected really does suggest that social distancing and the very restrictive measures that were introduced in Wuhan and the Hubei province uh, truly reduced the, uh, the, the so-called reproduction number, which is, the, which is the infectivity of the virus. So, you know, I know it's very hard for people, um, but we, we got to keep doing it. We got to keep doing it until we have 
a, a significant reduction of the rate of infectivity. Research at this moment in time is more important than it's ever been. Can you comment on the landscape for state and federal funding? Is it where it needs to be? Or are you getting the resources uh, uh, that you require? It's a great question, Abby. Uh, well, first of all, we, we probably, we always complain that we never really get enough resources. Um, but, but I think, uh, and, and I think, you know, without, uh, without dwelling in the politics, obviously, I, I think that we as a society, not just as a government, but we as a society were not really prepared uh, for this type of, uh, of uh, crisis, of uh, health crisis. Uh, it's the stuff that you watch, you know, that you see in movies or uh, you read the dystopic novels about. But seeing it here today uh, really exposed the, the significant vulnerabilities of our societies. And so, you know, my hope, personal and professional, is that we learn from this experience and we really allocate the resources that are needed in order to face uh, the next pandemic. Because there will be another one and will be several others. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that's my, my own uh, personal hope that something good will come out of this. Right now, we don't really see any positive aspect of hundreds of thousands of people uh, dead and, uh, and millions, the lives of millions offended. I really hope that we remember the lesson uh, and be prepared. I find it unconceivable, unconscionable that, that our nation is uh, running low in uh, personal protective equipment and goggles and gloves. I mean, it's, uh, I, if you would have told me three months ago, I would never believe that. Yeah, we have discovered how uh, ill-equipped uh, we, uh, we are in times of this crisis. And if there is a silver lining, we're definitely learning for the next time. Uh, if people want to find more out about the vaccine um, and the Worcester Institute in general, where would they go? Wister.org. It's our website, and we created a special COVID-19 page um, pages actually on the website in order to really to try to um, uh, talk a little bit about the research that is behind. You know, everybody's focused on the vaccine, but Abby, you have seen the estimate. I mean, we're talking about a year at the, at the earliest, probably more like 18 months. Uh, and so more needs to be done. We need to learn more about the biology of the virus and we need to learn more about its vulnerabilities. The uh, option that some of the existing drugs, to use the jargon, that could be repurposed for the COVID-19 treatment, I think is a very important area to pursue further. Um, those drugs are already available and therefore the path for them to reach the, uh, the, the patients that most need them is faster. And so, and so th there has to be a lot of work that goes behind that. And, and that's what our institute is working as well. That's certainly on advancing the um, 4,800 vaccine that has been now, um, now being tested in healthy volunteers. We really hope to have the, uh, to see the um, uh, safety data and tolerability data by the summer and really uh, hopefully move on to the efficacy phase of the, of the trial. Uh, evaluation. Well, I, I know that uh, there are many that are very thankful for your work, and I look forward to catching up with you um, uh, when we have uh, more information to share. Uh, again, uh, Dario Altieri, President and CEO of the Worcester Institute, thank you so much for your time. And again, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, to view more uh, business leaders and how they are addressing COVID-19. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Abby.